So Perfect. one thing we saw from the, uh, did you see the Washington State Hospital Association study? Absolutely. So one thing that they said might be leading to the part of the nursing shortage problem is nursing schools just can't handle more students. Is that something that WSU Spokane seeing as well? That's correct. So we have had um, pretty consistent enrollment for a number of years, but not any growth of enrollment. And one of our major limiting factors is our number of faculty that are available to teach and the number of clinical sites where we can train students alongside working registered nurses. So it's uh, not that you don't want to take on more students, you just don't have the resources. That's to. correct. In fact, every year we have a really significant number of very qualified applicants that we cannot admit because we don't have the faculty resources and the clinical placement resources to educate them. Is this a new problem or is this something that's been ongoing? <laughs> no, this has been ongoing. Um, I would think, I would say that most nursing programs in the state would identify this as a similar issue for them in their schools as well as in their communities. So it does beg the question of how can we do this better? How can we do this differently? How can we utilize other opportunities and resources so that we could educate more individuals who are interested in being registered nurses? And you kind of touched on it with your last answer, but just, uh, I guess, what are some solutions that are being thrown around or it is kind of something that's impossible to deal with? Yeah, so one of the potential solutions is to really capitalize on opportunities for simulated uh, clinical education. Um, that is something that we're very interested in and we've been uh, really lucky to have as part of our program here at WSU. So we have a, a, a complex simulation lab where students either work with um, high fidelity mannequins or even low fidelity models. We're also looking at opportunities to work with what's called standardized patients, which are individuals who are trained almost like actors so that they can come in and play the role of the patient in different types of healthcare settings or um, have different kinds of healthcare needs. And then the students have an opportunity to practice their skills and hone their skills in that setting before they go into the clinical agencies in the communities. And with the pandemic and the current nursing shortage at the same yeah. time, I guess how much more important is it now to find a way to get these students in the classrooms? Yeah. Absolutely. So I think uh, we're seeing a nursing shortage everywhere and it's only been compounded by the pandemic and probably will continue to be compounded by the uh, effects of the pandemic as nurses are feeling burnt out if they're close to retirement and think they want to take advantage of retirement a little bit earlier than they originally thought because of their experience in the pandemic. This will be an ongoing need from here on out. And then I know you said that you guys are enrolled taking all the students you can, but have you seen an increase in the number of applicants in the last few years? Um, we haven't necessarily in the last few years, but there is some early data that's suggesting that is, is happening in other places. And I think as we continue to get through uh, the early effects of the pandemic and we figure out how to educate, but as keep people safe and healthy, I believe we'll continue to see uh, future increased interest in, in those applicants. Likely those increases are seen in the early prerequisite classes. And have you heard from other educational institutions on the east side of the state? Are they seeing these similar problems? They are, absolutely. We and then Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, we gather um, a couple of times a month to talk about um, issues. Um, this is um, in, in nursing education across the state. So this is the group of deans and directors that come together to talk about what are some of the trends and issues that we're seeing, what are some possible solutions, what are things that we still need to have support for. So in that meeting, we also work closely with our state nursing commission because they regulate nursing education. And so we have to work closely with them to make sure that we're staying in alignment with their requirements. And if I'm an undergrad student and I know that there's more applicants than positions, how can I make myself more likely to get a spot? Yeah, so um, students really have to look at a couple of different factors. It's partly about their academics, obviously. So uh, GPA is certainly a factor that's considered an admission, but it's also about experiences um, that they've had in healthcare or healthcare settings. That doesn't necessarily mean a certain job or a certain uh, amount of volunteer. It could be their own personal experiences. So they really have to try to figure out um, a way to look like a well-rounded applicant who has the academic ability, but also the knowledge and 
background, um, understanding how they fit into the healthcare system and, and the impact that they could have um, with patient care. All right, and then this kind of has a domino effect almost on hospitals. What have you heard from our local healthcare partners? Yeah, so um, and healthcare partners are looking for uh, recruitment opportunities, obviously. So they have lots of open positions. They want nurses who are um, coming out of the educational setting, well prepared, able to hit the floor running, if you will, in many respects. Um, and um, they, they want to partner with us so that we can all uh, realize the, the better graduate of the future and, and they have an opportunity for uh, a great uh, employee that will stay in the profession long term. All right, and then I know you touched on some of the issues when it comes to resources like more faculty and more clinical opportunities. Do you, is there any estimated timeline on when you guys will be able to increase those resources to maybe take right. on more students? Um, there isn't at this point. We're looking for some um, additions um, such as faculty salary um, changes. Um, currently, faculty salaries are below uh, the typical um, salary of a registered nurse in the hospital setting, and so that makes it very difficult to recruit experienced nurses into education. Um, we're also looking at opportunities to partner with, um, with clinical agencies. Maybe there's a shared position between the agency and, and the university. Um, we're just looking for unique ways to start to address this problem so that we can educate more individuals to be a registered nurse. And let's say I'm a registered nurse, maybe I've been in, in the industry a while and I'm looking for, maybe I want to get out of the clinical setting. What would you say to that person to try to convince them to maybe look into becoming a faculty member? Yeah, I think the greatest part of being a faculty member is the ability to, te to impact a large swath of individuals who are going to go out and be amazing nurses. Our undergraduate um, class is about 130 students. So if I'm teaching here in Spokane, I'm impacting at least 80 students here in the community, as well as 20 to 24 students in the Tri-Cities area and 20 to 24 students in the Yakima area. I have a big impact on those individuals and those communities to uh, educate a, a person to be a great registered nurse. All right, uh, might have felt short, but I think you kind of hit everything I <laughs> wanted to ask about. Is there anything else about, I guess, this issue with you guys just being full, basically? Yeah, um, I think the other place that's not yet realized is um, our rural communities. There are some amazing hospitals and clinic systems in rural and underserved areas of Washington that are not yet um, fully utilized as part of the educational process. And that's something that we're um, particularly interested in is how, we, how can we best get our students there? How can we support them in being in those communities? Um, transportation costs, the cost to stay overnight maybe. Um, and then how can we provide enough support for that hospital that might only have a few registered nurses and they do a number of different jobs in that setting? And how can we make it meaningful for them and for the student?